Hey there guys, it's Rick here. Hope you're all doing extremely well out there. I know I am. Hope you enjoyed that little video at the start of this video. That video was made almost five years ago. Um, and uh, I was watching it earlier today and I thought, I wonder if I can actually play it. Still play it, that is, as well as I did back then. Uh, it'd be interesting uh, because five years have elapsed since then. Um, and then I thought it'd be a great idea to record this so that you can see kind of how I approach uh, practicing these things or, or going back to relearn it kind of thing. Uh, so I've just put the camera on in front of me and we're just going to go straight for it. I haven't actually sat down and worked out the pattern. So I'm just going to try and figure it out and hope that the muscle memory kind of works and comes back pretty quickly. It should do. That's in my experience that tends to happen a lot. You know, if you've put in a lot of work to learn something, when you go back to relearn it, so to speak, uh, the muscle memory kicks in and uh, the fingers start to go, ah, I remember this. So I'm hoping that is what's going to happen. Um, but I'm going to take it nice and steady. There may be some bad notes in there, so <laughs> be prepared. Um, so I'm going to take it nice and steady and uh, see how it goes. Okay, let's get straight to it. I remember it's in the key of A minor, so that's our first um, arpeggio, all the way up here at fret 17. Uh, okay, um, the first thing I'll start with though that springs to mind with this uh, progression, um, it's a series of different inversions, um, and it follows this sort of descending chromatic um, bass line. Um, and uh, that's important to make sure that that's brought out when we do the arpeggio. So um, that should hopefully uh, allow the, the arpeggios to present themselves. Um, it should make it pretty obvious what I played. So we're going to start here, fret 17. It's just a straightforward, straightforward uh, minor arpeggio, A minor, with a tap at fret 24. Whoops. Yeah, there we go. It's rolling quite nicely, that. One thing that's really important to do when you do these arpeggios, make sure the middle voices uh, pop out of the arpeggio. You don't want them to be a mess when you play it at speed. Every single note needs to be clear. So I've got to make sure my left and right hands are in sync. I'm coordinating it and everything's flowing smoothly. You've also got to be extremely honest with yourself when you play it. Just because you're playing it at you know, a, a crazy speed doesn't necessarily mean that the clarity is there and that you can hear each individual note. So you have to really be honest with yourself when, when doing this. So that's our first arpeggio. So following that bass note movement, what's the second one? It's a straight ahead um, major arpeggio, but in uh, first inversion. But we get this. And that's what this, these, this arpeggio sequence um, involves, is on the top E string doing these extended hand positions with the tap. Okay, so that's our second shape. There we go. And now we can move down to G major. Yeah, it's flowing. So the muscle memory is working. Um, Okay, and then we've got the same thing as we played here, but a whole tone lower. And on the upper strings, or upper string I should say, what have we got? 17, 20, and then tap at 24. There we go. Then what do we have here? Same major. Yeah, tapping at... Um, 24 again. I remember this one is a bit of a pain in the ass. Yeah, I know why. Um, when I was 
putting it together, the, the actual sequence, um, I was considering using a uh, E minor uh, arpeggio, but I, I ended up choosing C major and then putting the A minor, E minor, sorry, portion of of that on the upper um, on the first string. Oh, be careful of that. That's better. Yeah, it's pretty awkward that to get that stretch in. Um, then we move from there down to D minor, straight ahead. Tapping at 24. Okay, good. And then finally up to the E arpeggio, well, E7. Uh, on the last arpeggio, I think I, I hit 22, slide up to 24. But I've got false nails on at the moment because I'm practicing a lot of classical guitar. And I don't want to balls them up, so uh, I'm not going to do that. But by all means, you can do that if you play this. Um, so let's just go over it nice and slowly. First arpeggio. Second. One thing that I'm not going to do is I'm not going to play it up to speed, um, mainly because I th the way that I practice things is I keep things nice and steady uh, until I feel like I'm really, really in control before I start pushing the speed. That's just the way that I approach things. Um, So I wouldn't want to take it any faster than that. Um, but yeah, there we have it. That was actually good fun to do, to go back to some of the old uh, stuff that I used to do. Um, so I'm going to make this a series. So if there's any uh, arpeggio sequences that I've done in the past, you know, go through some of my old videos and uh, leave a comment in the comment section and I'll see if I can uh, play it now, you know, uh, five years later. There's a lot happened in my playing since, since then. So. Um, it really is interesting to go back and see how I would approach it now. But the muscle memory thing is interesting because, like I said before, once you've done the work, uh, you know, it should come back to you pretty quickly. Uh, but like I said, I like to take my time over it and not rush things too much. Anyway, there we have it. Um, just a quick reminder, there's still 50% off uh, downloadable lessons from my website. Link is, link is in the description box below. So make sure you get on it. Only a few days left for that. Anyway, that is it. Hope you enjoyed today. I will catch up with you guys in the next video. Take it easy.